our next our next presentation is going to be uh, we'll have uh, three gentlemen. Kevin, you've you've already met yesterday and gave his bio, so I won't do that again. Vineet Agarwal will also be involved, and you you heard him yesterday as well in his um, his bio. And so the the third gentleman is is Ewan Smith. And so uh, I want to introduce Ewan is an optical physicist by training. Ewan has taken a long and varied path over 25 years of commercially facing technology development, including laser design through OLED project displays to camera systems, AI-based image processing. Ewan is an author on over 40 patents, 160 patents in total in diverse technical areas. He is a published technical author, is an invited speaker on technical and business topics, is a long-standing IEC technical expert in TC110 electronic displays. Ewan has a degree in optoelectronics and PhD in nonlinear spectroscopy, both from the Harriet Watt University um, in Scotland. And so with that, I welcome these three gentlemen, and I don't know the order you're going to go in, but I'll let you, you work that out. So. Thanks again, Paul. All right. So uh, on the, the uh, agenda there, it says new product release, and, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Um, want to kind of give a little bit of background uh, of what we were thinking. About four years ago, we all sat in a room at Heath, and we were going over the challenges with the sales team and, and with the executive team and, and trying to figure out um, what the, the next generation was in terms of instruments. What are the pain points that our utility customers are after? And how can we revamp the product line at Heath um, and, and build off the success from basically everything that we had um, with our, our, our previous products with the RMLD and then even on to the, to the DPIR? So we started brainstorming and we started figuring out, okay, there, there are many different um, ways we can go with this, but what if we could do something that was more all-in-one or more family-oriented or build off of a, a technology platform? So we started looking at, at ways we could do that and going on the whiteboard and, and brainstorming a little bit. And I, I would say at you know, 30, 45 minutes later, we, we put something on the whiteboard and it was a eureka moment. You know, we said, let's, let's go forward, let's see if we can do this. So that, that kicked that off, um, you know, a while back. So I'm going to go through a, a few things here. We're going to, going to kind of tell you what it is and show you what it is. I'm going to turn it over to these guys that are way smarter than myself so they can go over some of the technical aspects of, of the product um, and kind of uh, go, go into a little deep dive, which, again, when you guys have questions later, these are the guys to talk to, not me. Um, and then we'll kind of jump back in and, and give you some use case applications and kind of let you know uh, what we're thinking in terms of uh, when this product's coming out. And you are going to get to see it today. Uh, we do have beta units here available to play with on the, the live demo session later. So you will get a hands-on on look on some of these and then uh, you'll be able to ask more questions then as well. But when we were, when we were thinking about this, uh, one of the main things is, is to build, like I said, off of what Heath has been known for. and what we need to strive for in the future. So we have um, you know, some of the most standard products you'll see out there for the LDC market in terms of leak survey. We said, how can we then build upon that? How can we complete our product portfolio? So that was step one. We said, how can we get the highest sensitivity and precision that it's needed for all the advancements in technology right now and, and what's being driven from the advanced mobile standpoint, how you do follow-up surveys, um, basically, what was that next instrument that was going to help you do that investigation after the fact? So that was step two. We said, okay, what's the next thing? Well, Heath, as you know, is always committed to excellence with our customers in mind. So we said, how can we make sure that those products build off of that? And we do that in a way that you'll see in a little bit. We provide a little modularity in what we're designing and a little bit of a, a future-proof design. So you see that um, come together with steps three and four there. And then we said, again, what is the key and what we're going for? It's data and how can we design these products to have data collection in mind as well as cloud collection or mobile app and the integration of everything we're doing, especially when we talk about Heath's turnkey offering and how we plan on using the products to be implemented with our, with our technicians and then go on and give you the full service offering that you want uh, for a leak survey program. So with all these things in mind, this is what we set out to many, many years ago, and we spent 
uh, a lot of time in a concept feasibility stage, throwing technology on the wall, looking at, I think we got up to 18 or 21 different technology avenues that we tried to go from a sensor aspect um, before we finally had something where it was ready to go and let's start moving this through the stage gate process and let's start going forward. And that's exactly what happened. So with that, I'm gonna give you a little bit of product introduction and a short video. So welcome to the hybrid product line of instruments. This is uh, three instruments with a common user interface across uh, the platform, and they share a technology platform inside that is pretty much revolutionary to any product that you'll see for gas leak detection right now using NDIR technology. Um, based off of this, we, we'll see some of the, uh, the great features along the way that these gentlemen are gonna talk to. Um, but really, the, the main key point in doing this and doing what we did is the elimination of calibration gas, elimination of calibration stations, and basically having self-test, self-calibration daily for your users with zero headache and zero connections to um, any kind of calibration unit. So everything is self-internally calibrated and self-tested and compact and platform wise, you will provide that same user interface, same user experience. So whether your service technician is out there doing customer leak odor investigation using a, a customer service tool, or they're out doing um, construction operations using the CGI construction version, or whether they're performing leak survey with the, the hybrid leak survey device, which is our next generation DPIR, basically. It's, it's a replacement for your Dipper Plus. So you have a complete product suite going all the way from customer service through construction operations and leak survey with one common platform, one common look, and one common basically technology across the, the span of, of what you get. And with that, we have uh, multi-gas detection. So you see there up on the slide, of course, methane being your primary gas we're detecting, but we also have um, pipeline gas discrimination, basically non-methane non hydrocarbon, um, as well as CO and O2, all done optically. Um, no electrochemical sensors to degrade um, and, and nothing to change over time. Um, life of, of the sensors basically is, is you know, unlimited base, uh, from that standpoint. There's um, some differences in the way optics work versus the electrochem and, and poisoning, so there is no poisoning of the optical sensors. Um, it's basically something that is maintenance-free as you go through and will give you everything you need in terms of the product line and what we can do moving forward. And there's a lot of advantages in, in the way we've designed this that we're gonna cover later. We talked about modularity. Um, we'll, we'll show you how, what that means and what that can mean for your application and how um, it, it shows our commitment to meeting your future needs and not just what would meet the market now and what we're trying to do with advanced technologies. Thanks, Kevin. 
Okay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into the detail of the technology. That's not what you want to hear. You want to hear what, the, what it's going to do for you, what the performance of the device is going to be. So we have got uh, instruments which are entirely optical, so they can self-calibrate. Uh, they get down to 5 ppm on both CO and CH4, and they can discriminate between um, uh, marsh gas from a sewer gas and pipeline gas. They also have on the construction units also got an entirely optical O2 sensor as well. And the leak survey unit is really an evolution of the uh, DPIR, which you're very familiar with. So we've took, taken that, we've improved the sensitivity, we've added ethane detection to that as well. And the key thing, you know, we're talking about the pipeline discrimination here, um, the CS and the construction units nominally at 1%. These are provisional specs. Certainly, we've got performance on the beta units significantly better than that. So we want to get that down as low as we can, but these are very much provisional specs at the moment. Both the customer service and the construction unit are both beta units at the moment. Leak service alpha. Kevin will be talking about the time scale to development uh, over the next few months, and we'll be looking to start customer trials shortly on all those. And of course, as you make more units, uh, you learn more about the device that you're making. So all units will be fast response. In particular, the leak survey, we're aiming at around about a second response time. They all self-calibrate, methane CO and CO2, also for oxygen on the construction unit, and methane and ethane on the leak survey. Weight, so we've taken the weight down on the leak survey a little bit compared to the DPIR. The construction, the customer service, are particularly considering the optical system that's in there, we've taken what was essentially a lab-based optical instrument and shrunk it down to make it a portable device. Battery life, we're looking at for the CS unit, it's got a smaller cell, continuous usage, two hours, four hours operational usage, construction unit, four hours continuous usage, leak survey, four hours as well, but the replaceable battery packs, standard USB-C charger, no special charging needed, just standard modern equipment you can use to charge it. Connectivity, they all have the same head unit, which is attached to all of them, has got Bluetooth, USB, removable SD card, integrates with the Heath suite of apps and into their infrastructure. They contain GNSS, uh, multi-antenna GNSS, um, and there will also be, and Kevin will talk about this li uh, later, but there's also a plan for add-on modules which can add functionality to the range, and in particular, the construction and leak survey unit can use the same add-on modules, and one of those will be, for example, higher accuracy GNSS, particularly for leak survey where that's required. All three devices designed to be intrinsically safe, and all targeting zone one. Okay, so key fe features, already mentioned, the internal self-calibration. It's quick, takes a couple of minutes, that's all, calibrates the units. Don't need to worry about bump testing. Removes an awful lot of the headache of uh, using these kinds of devices uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. High sensitivity and fast response time, going all the way down to 5 ppm for the um, customer service and the construction. The uh, leak survey unit goes all the way down to, at the moment, we're quoting 500 ppb. We think we can get a bit better than that, still at alpha stage but we're aiming the stretch targets to get down to 200 ppb on a handheld instrument. Future add-on modules, I mentioned the GNSS. We're also talking about adding in hydrogen, adding in smart probes, and a range of other devices, uh, depending on what the market needs. USB-C chargeable, it's a modern integrated touchscreen uh, on the head unit, so uh, the ergonomics are really good, and in particular, it's using modern techniques for building that optical module. Uh, many devices have got a display and you put a perspex screen or something to protect it in front of it. Each of those surfaces reflects sunlight. So each thing you put in front of it reduces the visibility uh, of what's on the display. If you look at your phone, it's a completely integrated optical stack. That's what we've done here. So it's a proper modern construction uh, for the display module with integrated capacitive touch which will be tuned for gloved use as, as well. But of course, there's buttons uh, on the unit uh, if the uh, capacitive touch isn't um, available. 
It's going to have a common user-friendly user interface across all the units. The aim is, if you're familiar with one of them, you can use any of them. Don't need to be retrained. It should be a familiar user interface. You know how to navigate yourself around. And we can also you know, make the, uh, be more flexible in terms of what modes are available and what devices. The head module is detachable. You can take it away. You can plug it with the USB-C cable into your computer. You can access all the data logs which are on there, calibration certificates generated by the device. All the tracking information is on there. Also, the SD card on the back is removable, so you can get at the data that way. Both of these are available. And the data will automatically sync through Bluetooth interface and through Heath's apps through to the Heath's Leak Survey analytics platform. So we want a completely integrated system. And because they all work the same way, you don't need to learn separately how to integrate each individual device. You'll be paired to one head unit. You can take a head unit off one instrument, plug it in another one. So the user interface is modern, clean interface, very visible. The uh, display used is a reflective display, um, very high performing in direct sunlight with a front light in front of it to be visible in dark conditions. So it's very, very clear, very, very crisp display under all illumination conditions. As I know, if you move towards higher end graphics displays, these can be challenging in direct sunlight. This is not, works really, really well. Touch screen or button interface, and also it can uh, rotate the current beta versions don't, but the ultimate product will be able to work in portrait or landscape mode, following it around so you can work for right-handed people or left-handed people, depending on which way around you want to operate it. So a range of common, um, uh, common user interfaces for the different devices, so it'll be familiar, uh, whether it's the first few screens show some bar hole probing or you're looking at purge mode or just looking at uh, sort of gas leak mode, uh, observing various different gases, and quite reconfigurable uh, depending on the requirements of the particular customer. So I'm not going to go into the detail of the technology, but it is all optical. It uses multiple optical sensors, uh, internally built-in uh, calibration cells, uh, and uh, both units also have the capability, there is a slot for an EC cell if that's required. Not all gases are suitable for working with optical sensing. For example, if there's a requirement for hydrogen sulfide, that isn't suitable for optical sensing at the moment. So there is a slot to customize the device with an EC cell should that be required. But the core gases for the system are entirely optical. One of the key features why we're detecting not only methane, ethane, and CO, but also CO2, moisture. That's because if you get to really low sensitive, really high sensitivity, really low concentrations with NDIR, you start to get crosstalk from multiple different species, particularly water is absorbed throughout the spectrum. So the system works uh, looking at all the responses from all the detectors and builds a state, build, uh, builds a state of the, the gases it's observing and maintains that continuously. And this has a number of advantages, but one particular one which you see in some instruments is you sometimes get a step when you move over detection ranges. You move from one type of instrument to another, and you get from one range to another, and you get a step in the signal, and you don't know which is actually the right value. This takes into account all the sensor readings all the time. So it's smooth and continuous, auto-ranging, don't need to manually go in and set that. Miniaturized optical design. We've taken a system, the original prototypes Kevin will tell you, I think we had was a tube about, about this long or so, which wouldn't have been very practical. So that's shrunk down the, the optical design. The main source is about that size. The main optical gas path is highly folded inside the assembly. So we've managed to shrink down what was a lab-based instrument sitting on a bench down to something that's handheld. Really high thermal stability. I don't know if this is, uh, there'll be other people in here who work with optical instruments. You know how difficult it is to get something stable with temperature. So the key to this is completely internally stabilized the temperature so it operates over a wide range of external ambient temperatures. I mentioned the highly folded gas path. Um, An optimized digital control of the system, basically minimizing noise, getting the most signal out of the system you can. An integrated multi-gas calibration cell. So the calibration cell covers 
um, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and methane. The ethane you get for free. <laughs> so industry-proven, reliable, highly sensitive IR detection technology in the SIP system. So this is the leak survey. So it's based on the DPIR. DPIR has been out in the field, is very well trusted. What we've done is we increased the gas path using the same folded technology. We've improved the electrical design. We've improved the uh, analysis. And so we can get down to the 200 to 500 ppb range on the instrument while still keeping the very fast response times. But we've also added in ethane sensitivity as well. So while you're doing leak survey, you can draw an amount of gas and you can assay it to test whether it is pipeline gas or marsh gas. The last thing to note is that all designs have been done with intrinsic safety in mind from day one. So they're all targeting zone one. They don't have the approvals yet. That process takes a little while, as I'm sure Vinit's got the scars for other devices. Um, but it's awesome here because yeah, 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 indeed. <laughs> um, uh, but it's been designed with intrinsic safety in mind from the start. So we don't anticipate to have any significant issues with getting that passed. Okay, with that, oh. I will hand over to Vinny. Thank you, Yoon. You know, when I stand next to Dr. Yoon Smith, you know, both of us standing, my average IQ increases dramatically. So. <laughs> Three of us, you know, it's pretty good. Um, with Kevin, my EQ increases dramatically. So either way, I'm, I'm learning, I'm, I'm participating, so. So the beauty of this is, uh, you know, upper management, you know, Drew, Paul, Patrick, Kevin, of course, and many others, um, you know, a few years back, they said, we don't want to create a Me Too product. We, we want to build something that is market changing, that is dramatic that will take care of a lot of the pain points people have with existing products and in the marketplace. And we want to take, take industry into a new direction. Of course, we want to learn from you, have learned from you over the years, and we want to continue to learn from you. Many of you know more about the application side, much more than we will ever know. But at the same time, we believe we can create something that is dramatically different. So in comparison, for example, you know, <clears throat> as Yun, Yun talked about, we are doing methane, we are doing non-methane hydrocarbon, which means pipeline discrimination. We are doing carbon monoxide, we are doing carbon dioxide with the, with the customer service tool, but all using NDIR technology, optical technology. No semiconductor sensor, not, no thermal conductivity sensor, no electrochemical sensor like I'm giving an example of some, some of our competition. Now, they may claim you know, some good sensitivity, one ppm sensitivity in case of uh, some of these sensors, but these semiconductor or electrochemical sensors are not very reliable. Uh, you all know that semiconductor sensors, once challenged with a gas, very high concentration, they will not purge very easily, they are not very dependable, they drift a lot with humidity and temperature variations, a lot of different things. It, and they are cross-sensitive to a lot of different gases. If you find a sensor version that is not cross-sensitive to other hydrocarbons, it is going to be very slow because of filters. So there are all these different sensor technologies that modern competition uses that makes the product very unreliable over longer period. That's why you have to constantly challenge them with gases, bump testing. I remember, um, in fact, Eric, uh, uh, one of our um, consultants here, uh, he, he gave us good inspiration on that, said, CO sensor, you don't know it is working or not working. When a person takes a CO device, electrochemical device, into a building, they don't know unless they challenged it with the gas right then and there that it is a good sensor. So you might actually be exposing somebody to a toxic gas without realizing that that particular instrument is really sensitive to CO at that particular time. And that's why <clears throat> calibration and the infrastructure it takes to support calibration for all these multi-gas devices is very, very difficult. And you all know that, right? It's very time consuming. It is very cumbersome, to say the least, right? and so many stations have to be maintained. 
We can take care of all of that with one sensor technology that does all of it, has a calibration vial, can do multiple gases within the same vial, and get multi-point field calibration with the same vial. And that's the nature of the design we have come up with. These guys have come up with. So um, 5 ppm, we chose 5 ppm, and guess what? Um, FOMSA NPRM comes out on May 18th. They have a requirement of 5 ppm sensitivity. So it, it was just, we got really lucky or blessed, or whatever you want to call it. 5 ppm, 5 ppm. And, and so 5 ppm methane, of course, 5 ppm CO. So that's plenty sensitivity to give you a clear understanding of whether something is a good environment or, or not a good environment. Um, everything comes with connectivity, uh, Bluetooth connectivity, logging of data, calibration data is in a SD card. If you look at the device, there is a display head that, is, that can easily be removed and it has USB port, it has SD card, everything gets logged there. And almost, you know, infinite number of records you can keep. And so you can access that SD card wirelessly or through USB port, uh, all the data. And, and so, and we will have companion apps, and we'll talk a little bit about that, where the data can be easily taken off the device into an app, and the long-term focus is um, last, yesterday we talked about the LSA platform, leak survey analytics platform. So all that data will be available on that platform. So we have calibration records readily available through a phone app, and then all that is available through a web portal down the road. Okay. Similarly for um, construction CGI unit, in addition to methane, non-methane hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, we might actually be also be able to probe in, we're working on that, and oxygen sensor. The idea is optical oxygen sensor. Now I remember a lot of us in the past have used oxygen sensors that don't work more than two years, some one and a half years, bulging liquid coming out. That's, we wanted to get rid of electrochemical oxygen sensors. We, we went with the optical approach, right? So the idea is <clears throat> it's self-calibrating, and it is going to be longer life. So it's not like one and a half years, two years, you don't know. You have to constantly check, do we need to send the unit for maintenance or update the sensor? Um, all the same specifications. Um, plus, we're going to maintain 10% uh, accuracy uh, because of the field calibration. You start the day with the field calibration using calibration while, and, and it will, not only calibrate at the low end of the spectrum of gases, but also at the high end. So you have full calibration across a larger range. And so that provides more accuracy over, and, 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 and as Ewan talked about, auto-ranging allows you to switch from one channel to the other channel seamlessly and, and being accurate all throughout the journey. Um, Weight, of course, uh, about three, three and a half pounds, and rest of the uh, numbers are pretty obvious. The sensitivity with, with pipeline gas discrimination is meant to be about at half percent or better. So with a natural gas at half percent or so, you should be, or 5,000 ppm, or even, or even earlier than that, you should be able to tell whether it is a pipeline gas has non-methane hydrocarbon components or not. Leak survey, DPR plus, how many people like DPR plus? I hope everybody does, but I'm sure there are things that we can improve. Um, but from what I've heard, awesome response time, awesome sensitivity, very good search instrument, and that's what uh, we have tried to make. So as, as Heath company, we have always wanted to create products that are superior in the marketplace, they are high performing, and they are a very fast response. Because we realize response time is productivity. If you have to constantly dwell at one place for long periods of time, you lose productive hours, right? Productive time. As somebody was talking about, I think Roy was talking about 50,000 fittings or whatnot. In a, you know, so many places you have to go and look for leaks sometimes. And every time you look for a leak 
and you have to put the probe there and wait five seconds, semiconductor sensor or uh, any other sensor take three, four, five seconds to respond, it's not worth it, even if it is one ppm sensitive. So here, what we tried to do with leak surveys, one second response time, you get a clear idea whether the leak or not. With, with 0.2 pp, ppm or 200 ppb target sensitivity, which you are about to, somewhere in that range, 200 to 300 is what we're likely to, to end up with finally. So not only your very high sensitivity, you have very fast response, so there is no way you can miss a leak wherever the person is, and how quickly they can go through each joint, each pipeline point, each venting point, and, and the idea behind that. Now, when you bring a lot of sensitivity, there's also a danger of false positives with sewer gas. So we had to bring ethane discrimination. So the good thing about DPR technology is not only it does methane very well, it does ethane very well. So with methane and ethane combination, you not only get high sensitivity, fast response, you also minimize false positive with sewer gas, and all that combined is what we are trying to build a product, we hope, that creates a wall. That is exactly addresses all the pain points people have about, about this particular technology. So we get fast response, natural gas leak, uh, fa uh, and 0.2 ppm sensitivity, and be able to tell ethane discrimination not after 30 minutes of warm up, not after one to two minutes of looking through a chromatograph, not by putting a bar hole and getting a 1% gas before we can tell it, but to be able to tell it on the surface at 300 to 500 ppm, is this natural gas, is this sewer gas? So to be able to tell without having to dig a bar hole, without having to wait one minute, can do it within a few seconds on a surface reading. So we believe this, is, um, this can dramatically improve a lot of people's experience in finding leaks and, and finding methane emission sources. So there are different applications, uh, leak investigations. So most gas companies you know, constantly inundated with leak investigation called leak and order investigations. We have to also do leak service. So hopefully these three spectrum of products covers all the activities related to leak investigation and leak survey and leak search, right? Um, with future enhancements, we can probably work towards other elements like we talked about GNSS, precision GNSS, um, you know, uh, finding the exact lat and long to be able to pinpoint the bar holes and all that stuff. So that's, that's the enhancements we have worked into the system. So with the add-on modules, we can do all that. Also, potentially hydrogen sensing, if that becomes a norm where hydrogen sensing is needed, so we have the opportunity to create an add-on hydrogen module. Um, in addition to that, you know, distribution, uh, first responding, responders, confined space monitoring, all that is part of um, uh, you know, the customer service and construction uh, capabilities. Leak survey, of course, gas distribution, storage facilities, landfill monitoring. With carbon dioxide also being sensed, you can also use it for landfill monitoring. So we are also making that opportunity available with the applications that go beyond a pipeline gas measurement. Okay. All right, over to you, Yun. Thanks, uh, Nate. Appreciate it. So what does this mean for you guys, and, and what are we talking about here, and what's the benefit of, of the whole hybrid line and what we're looking at for uh, the NDIR technology and self-calibrating, self-test uh, within these units? At the end of the day, it means less dollars, money in your pocket, less, less time wasted um, going through calibrations. So looking at, at kind of long-term savings, time efficiency, user confidence, that user confidence might be the most important thing you have, minus saving dollars, everybody loves to save dollars, but to know that every day when you start your job that all your sensors are working, that you're detecting what you should be detecting is priceless, especially when it means the safety of your technicians out in the field as well as your customers. So if you kind of look at this and we wanted to break it down and how do you say, well, you know, how much are we going to save if we're not buying calibration gas anymore and we don't have to have, 
you know, a calibration station for X number of units and, you know, we don't have somebody now managing a supply chain of the cal gas. We don't have technicians coming back to an office, spending 30 minutes doing a calibration and then going back and forth. So you kind of estimate some of all these time savings, some of all these general cost savings. And you can say, you can basically say by, by switching over to hybrid, um, if it fits your application, roughly around, you know, 140K per year uh, of savings or per calibration station. So that adds up along the way, and it eliminates a lot of the headache you have with calibrating units, with connecting to the, the IT department, getting IT to help, network issues, um, maintenance of, of the O-rings and stations and different things like that. All of this adds up, and all of this is time savings, all of this is confidence in what the device brings to the table. What makes it then the next um, greatest thing that you might want to say is we've tried to design this, again, modular-wise to where we have expansion for this product line. So you can kind of see in the images below um, for the construction and leak survey version, we have designed them to accept kind of a, a add-on pack that would clip in and goes right into the inlet and is um, connected to the device via the touch panel or via our head system. And what we could add is, again, we talked about a high accuracy GNSS. So for the leak survey, that is something that you would want to put on there. As you're taking breadcrumb readings from your uh, technicians out in the field, you want to make sure they were at where they were supposed to be at, walking over the asset within a, a certain um, distance, less than a meter, um, as you're walking. So you can make sure that that pipeline was covered. When you tie this in with our data strategy and what we're developing and up in the cloud, all of a sudden those breadcrumbs turn into a coverage that shows the asset was covered. There's no more questioning whether your service tech was there. There's no more questioning whether that line got surveyed or not. It's all part of the system when you add that in there. We talked about adding hydrogen, um, a big hot topic. There's a lot of blending going on. So with both of these devices, we can add in a hydrogen sensor to it that will seamlessly work within the gas capture of what we're bringing in with the, um, the inlet probes. So that will be brought in, that can be displayed then on the head unit uh, interface. It will automatically know that, that we've brought in a, a hydrogen sensor or attached another sensor onto there. So that will be become, become part of the menu. And that's something that, again, is part of that seamless user interface and understanding once you start adding these things on there, it's just like second nature to use it. And then the other thing that we're talking about is because we've built in the smarts to the head unit and because we have this commonality, is what can we do then later on as far as attaching different probes to the system? Um, talked about, you know, maybe haptics, um, you know, your phone vibrates whenever you get a text message or anything like that, or you're pushing a button and it gives you that uh, haptic feedback. Do we want to do that for technicians out in the field as well with a, with a hand probe as they're walking and doing leak survey? You have a lot of noise in the system, you're on a crowded freeway, maybe you can't hear alarms or it's hard to do something. Can you have something that vibrates as you get to a leak or as you start detecting a leak? And that gives you that extra level of, of, of comfort um, in, in your service tech and making sure that they're doing their job and they, they can kind of feel and, and see what's going on. Um, and then we talked about quantification and that's coming to a, to a head in the industry. Uh, it's not just important enough to find the leaks anymore. Everybody's wanting to know how much was it leaking, what are the emissions, how does this all tie back in. So this is something that we've already looked at too with these two devices is how do we add on now a probe or an additional feature to where we can do quantification at some sort of uh, confidence level, you know, whether it be 10, 15, 20% uh, of value, but how can we integrate that into the hybrid product line as well to give you that future proof. So everything again we're looking at is not only did we make a product to meet your needs today, but we made it adaptable to meet your needs for tomorrow. And that's what's important for you guys when you talk to the sales team, they're constantly looking for ways uh, to improve your business and your way of life into what our products are. And we've already thought ahead with the feedback we've got to at least say, here's what's coming. Just keep on uh, talking to them and let us, let us know what's coming next and we'll integrate that as well. The second part of the, of the modularity and why this is a game changer is the head module that we've designed that has uh, the microprocessing on it as well as the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or, or the, the internet connection, and all the, the interface is extremely versatile. Again, as we said, you can snap it off one unit, basically put it onto another unit. So there's economies of scale as you, as you enter that. But what it also gives you is the flexibility from uh, over-the-air updates. It gives you flexibility to... Now, say, 
if there is another sensor that you guys need that doesn't fit our concept and what we have in the case works um, for the three devices you see there, you have this one head unit now that has the capability to what can you build around it. So again, it gives you the option to what you can build in the future based off your needs because you have the capabilities built into this one head unit that you can keep going down the road with. So very, very um, expansive in terms of a product line. Uh, hope that it meets all of the needs uh, in terms of what you have today and what your needs are for tomorrow. But again, this is exactly what we tried to do moving forward. So with that, you've heard we've got beta units here to test. We've got an alpha unit of the, of the leak survey. So just from a high level, what are you looking at today? We're in the, the beta testing user design validation as we go through in this um, current quarter. We're looking at Q3 having some, line, having some product coming off the line, getting into the pilot production, um, getting it into the hands of select customers uh, to use these devices and get the last uh, feedback, maybe some um, updates on use or just general quick updates that you can do out in the field. We've done a lot of this already, but now is the time to really, really put it to you and say, use it, tell us what you, tell us what you see and feel. Um, and then with the availability sometime later in the year to uh, go fully commercial for the uh, customer service and CGI version of hybrid. The leak survey is just a little bit behind. As you heard, it's the alpha version, but we do have a, a working version that you'll be able to get your hands on. It's gonna follow the same sort of phase. Um, again, Q3 on into Q4, getting the pilot units out, getting that up and running into the hands of some customers for some early feedback and adoption, um, along with all the intrinsic safe certifications that will be coming quickly um, in, in the next few quarters. Uh, so when you get all of that uh, aligned and in place, you're looking at some time early next year where the leak survey will be fully commercially available. So that is the, the plan right now. Um, the sales guys are, are, are working together to put something uh, in front of you. Uh, they'll be talking to you about this. Uh, hopefully you'll have a lot of questions for them along the way. We may not have all the answers for you, but you know we'll be sure to make something up that makes us sound really good. Um, just kidding. We'll have it. We'll have everything you want to know and more. Um, but please, please go talk to them. Uh, we are excited about this product. We are excited about what it can do for you and us in terms of our, our service business offering. And it, again, I hope you realize that everything that you've seen yesterday and everything that you see today is a tie-in of a full turnkey solution, not only for Heath, but for yourselves as well with the latest products and technology, the latest uh, sensitivity and accuracy of products, mixed with data, mixed with how do you control all that together and you bring it all together into one platform. So this again is, is something that we're, we're really, really pushing, something that we've heard from you and hopefully you see that in what we're doing here today in our products. Thank you very much and uh, with that, I guess we'll take some questions. Um, I noticed, so, the plan is to provide some type of application support to replace the docking station, right? Correct. Well, with that being said, I know um, for us internally, we have a lot of cyber and data security constraints, and I'm sure across the industry they have the same for their individuals, mobile applications, so phones and whatnot. Um, do you intend to pursue some, like, SOC 2 Type 2 certifications? for your applications to ensure a streamlined process? So everything would be built on the Microsoft Azure platform with uh, the latest security SSL and um, basically everything that we're looking at um, in terms of data requirements for utility customers, we go through that process and we work with you guys to make sure that it meets all your security requirements. Um, again, these are all self-calibrated units, so all the calibration happens on the units. The calibration records will be on there and then tie it in with the mobile app. It can be tied into whatever network you need, but it, it does go through a secure platform. Question two. <laughs> um, for your, you also have an operations side that does leak survey for, I'm sure, a lot of us LDCs. Um, do you intend to outfit your operation side with this equipment? Yes, we do. Yep. Okay. And I noticed that the leak survey doesn't provide CO, um, is there any reason for that in specific? No, we try to keep everything uh, very similar into the, the dis I guess, 
uh, distinguishing the products and distinguishing between the use. Uh, for most leak survey applications, CO is not necessary. We really, really wanted to focus on the technology in there to do methane and ethane uh, discrimination simultaneously and fast. And that's what the focus was on that moving forward. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Skyler, I, I thank you. Some of those questions were ones that I had as well. <clears throat> but in addition to that, uh, it, it had in there for four hours on the battery pack. So if we have somebody that's working an eight-hour day, is it a, are they able to switch out the battery on that very easily? Or okay. Yep. It's it, it's it, it's a standard lithium-ion battery pack, so it's rechargeable. You get a multiple batteries. The the aim was most people take a break, so it's just going to be your morning. You swap the battery out. You do your afternoon. Yep. Yes. Yes. So, so in addition to that, it's a USB charger. So any battery pack, some people sometimes have extra battery packs for their cell phones. They can use that also I, to charge. I, I was charging a couple of the batteries last night just on the on the USB sockets in the wall of the hotel. They're fine. We're working with that, but if you uh, want the want the correct answer, you need to go see your sales team. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. What is the operating temperature range of the equipment? Is it similar to the other? It's supposed to be from uh, 0 to 122F or minus 70 to 50C, one, minus 17C to 50C. So that's typical. Uh, will you be looking into getting CSA certification? Yes, it will be ULCSA as well as ATEX and ICX certification. So all European, international, as well as U uh, US North American Certifications will be covered. Do you, I'm sorry, over here. Do you have plans to uh, roll this please, out to where in, in states where the state regulatory agencies have to approve, you know, any leak survey or, or leak investigation mm -hmm. devices? Or do you have plans for that at this point? We do, and um, um, Pat Jacobs and his team will be happy to, to talk with you about how that's going to process. And a lot of times that's um, more by a I know utilities really put these things to the ringer when you have new technology coming through. Um, you guys will want to test these things for quite a while before you actually implement it in your programs as well and write your SOPs around that. So we are more than happy to work with you uh, along the way and help you along with your SOPs and how to integrate these products into your, your service as well. Uh, seeing that the head module is removable, is that will that be interchangeable with the different bodies? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to stand up so you can see me, Kevin. <laughs> uh, the low detection level of high PPM is, or I should say the low detection level, is the um, customer ability to adjust that if I don't want it detected at high PPM. Don't ask me why. <laughs> you, 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 you can set whatever <laughs> yeah, threshold yeah. you want. If, the, if that's a feature that's needed? Yeah. yeah. I mean, at that point in time, it's just firmware. So if it is yeah. a customer feature and we do a software update or firmware update to the device, that is something that can be put in the menu. Yeah, I, I, I could tell you why, right? If we're doing subsurface readings and we've cleared a gas leak, right, to get residual gas out of the ground, I'm pretty confident that I'll never clear a 5 ppm out of the ground. I'm sure there's always going to be latent gas in the ground. Right. That ATEX certification, is it specifically on the head module or across the entire range? Across the entire product. Hi, can I use the mobile kit that is in the, the other one, the old one, in a car with the little cones? So if you're currently using the, the DPIR mobile kit, um, which is the DPIR inside your vehicle with an extra pump bringing in um, from a mobiling standpoint, yes, at, at that point in time, once the, the hybrid leak survey comes out, that is kind of a, a direct replacement for that. And then we're looking at how that integrates into that mobile kit 
and to make sure that that is something that, that moves forward that will then give you, um, you know, the, the same sort of uh, mobling aspect of what you're looking at today. I noticed on the leak survey um, module, its sensitivity for methane is ideally 200 parts per billion, um, but it doesn't specify that for any of the others. Is that being that it's optical, is there any, what's the different, what's a deviant for that? It's a slightly different optical technology. So it's in the, in the leak survey unit, it's the same technology as in the current dipper, just an extension and improvement on it. That's, it's not uh, NDIR. It, the other systems are NDIR. Okay. That answers my question. Cool. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Is it the GPS capability, is it only with the leak survey or is it with the other two units as well? So uh, GNSS capability on the head unit is a dual frequency GNSS. So it is already going to be around one and a half meter accurate as is, but then we can add an add-on module for construction or uh, leak survey unit to give it additional accuracy through external antenna and through other mechanisms. So that's the even more precise GNSS can be made available. Already it will be dual frequency GNSS, so that's already at one and a half meter accuracy approximately. Um, and then we'll, we can make it sub-meter with the add-on module. So it's both for construction and leak survey, as well as all the devices. Yeah. Uh, one more. Just, as far as the calibration is concerned, do you have a lockout feature uh, in terms of prior to use? It, it's going to be a configurable item. So okay. some customers don't want it lockout, some do. So it, it, that'll be configurable at manufacturer how that's going to be set up. I think we'll keep things on, on schedule here. Um, guys, if you have more questions, especially when you get your hands on the devices outside later on this afternoon, uh, we'll be all sitting out there ready to answer any more questions as you, as you start to use this. So, um, But I think we'll, we'll kind of keep on schedule here and keep moving forward. Excellent. Well, thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. Cool.